I'm Apostle James Alfred and welcome to Kingdom Authority. Today we're going to be talking about fear and we're going to be talking about overcoming fear. So many of our lives we live being scared of things and sometimes we learn it from being children and things happening to us, sometimes experiences that we've had as adults. Sometimes we've seen other people go through different circumstances in their life and we start saying, well, I don't want that to happen to me, or we become scared that it may happen to us. And so we become fearful. But I'm going to take you over to a scripture, and we're going to start reading about fear, and we're going to start reading about how to overcome fear when it comes to you in your life. And I'm going to read to you from Exodus 14 and 9, and it reads, But the Egyptians pursued them, all the horses and the chariots of Pharaoh and his horsemen and his army, and overtook them encamping by the sea. And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes and behold, the Egyptians marched after them and they were so afraid. I want you to understand here that many times God is desiring to bring us out of circumstances and situations. He's desiring to bring us, bring us out of captive places. And many times he actually delivers us out of those captive places. But just like the nation of Israel, oh, Satan gets so mad when God begins to deliver you out of places where you may be in bondage or places where, where it weren't so good. When God begins to take you out of it, Satan begins to get angry and he starts to try to scare you, to get you to go back into the same captive place, the same bondage that you were in before. But God didn't give you a spirit of fear. But Satan desires that you walk in fear. He desires that you be uneasy. He, he desires that you, that you live a life that's restless or, or, or afraid or, or, or that you find yourself being nervous or, or paralyzed. Um, fear can actually paralyze you. It will put you in a place where you cannot move. That's what happened to the nation of Israel. They found themselves, God had delivered them out of their captive place in Egypt, but they found themselves at the edge of the sea. And they began to be fearful that God had took them out there to die. But see, God will never lead you into a place for you to die. God always brings you into a place where there's liberty, where there's deliverance. And we understand the scripture that God parted the sea. And the nation of Israel was able to walk over on dry land. Now, what happened here? Now, when we look up the definition of fear, it means to be afraid as of likely to be dangerous. Meaning that when we say likely, meaning when we say something's likely, we're saying that it could happen. And so we become fearful because of things that may happen, things that may come to pass, situations that, that may transpire in our lives. And we, we become uh, frozen because of that fear, because it may happen. But see, when God tells you something, when God speaks something to you, there's no need to walk in fear. When God pronounces something over your life, when he brings you out of a captive place, he, he, God doesn't bring you out of a captive place so that you may go back into another place of des desperation, another place of bondage. But God brings you out of captive places that you might go into the free place. And so God desires that you not have fear, but he desires that you have peace, joy and rest. So that you don't toss and turn. I know many times in my life in the past when I fall into fear, I found myself tossing and turning. I found myself not being able to sleep. I found myself being even uncomfortable when I would pray. I was so nervous I couldn't pray or I couldn't read the Bible. Well, that's what Satan wants. He wants to take Christians and he wants to have them not able to be confident. See, fear is the opposite of faith. When you're walking in fear, you're not trusting in God. When you're in a place of fear, you're not walking in faith. But when you have faith, fear has no power over your life. This is what God desires for you, for you to walk in faith and not fear. OK, we have to be able to to take authority over fear when it comes to our life. When situations come up and it looks bad or it looks like things are going to be bad, we have to take authority over it. We have to say, I'm not going to fear. I'm not going to be afraid. The Lord has, has said this thing. The Lord has shown me this. I know God has my back. I know God is going to bless me. I know that God is going to deliver me. And so I'm not going to be afraid, but I'm going to trust the Lord. We see in Scripture that Fear can even become a strong man in our lives, meaning that fear will begin to rule over us. 
fear will begin to take control over us and control everything in our lives. Some people find themselves not being able to leave their house because they're in fear. Some people find themselves not being able to leave their jobs because they're in fear. Some people can't get married because they're in fear. Other people, you know what I'm saying, find themselves in a place where they, they can never prosper in their lives because they're fearful. But God doesn't want you living in fear. He wants you to live in faith. He wants you to trust him. And he wants you to get beyond that strong man. See, the Bible says that we should bind up the strong man. And so I desire that God give you the strength that you bind up the strong man of fear in your life, that you may be able to move forward in power and authority, that the will of God may be accomplished over your life. Sometimes we find ourselves in desperation where we have lost all hope. We wonder if things will ever change. But if we look to Jesus and his work on the cross, our salvation is guaranteed, our life redeemed. Satan has lost his power, and now the authority for a victorious life is within our hands. Will you use what God has given you? Will you rise to victory? The Bible says in the last days, God's Spirit will reveal visions and dreams to His people. Some of the things God shows can be easily understood, but some leave us with questions like, is this really from God? Or what exactly does it mean? We find ourselves unsure of how to proceed. Apostle James wants the eyes of your understanding to be open. Send him your dream or your vision, and he will personally give you a revelation of what God is saying. The devil knows that there is only one thing that can save him. His name is Jesus Christ. Time is running short, and all true believers must be ready to stand strong. In the Jesus Equation, discover how Satan tries to remove the power of Christ's sacrifice from your life, leaving you subject to his evil will. It is so important that I get this information to you that I have made it available to you for free. To get your copy, go to www.kingdomauthority.org and may God bless you. Hi, and welcome back to Kingdom Authority. Today we've been talking about fear and we've been talking about the need to overcome fear. Fear brings you into a place of uneasiness. It puts you in a place where you cannot fulfill the purposes and the will that God has for your life. Fear puts you in a place where you find yourself tossing and turning at night, being unable to make decisions, but God does not desire this for you. God desires for you to walk in faith. He desires for you to walk in authority and to trust God and allow the faith that he's given you to raise up and be able to overcome every situation that may seem bad, every situation that may seem difficult. God desires for you to put your confidence in him. Trust him. Trust them. Don't let fear rule over your life. Now, when I think about fear, I think about Peter. And the Bible says that Peter was in a boat with the other disciples and they saw Jesus coming from a distance in the mist. And the Bible says that they were greatly afraid. And Peter called out to Jesus and he said, Lord, if it's you, bid me to come to you. And the Bible says that Jesus told him to come and Peter stepped out on the water and he began to walk on the water going towards Jesus. But some of you that know the story know what happened. The Bible says that Peter began to look at the wind. He began to look at the waves and he started becoming fearful. And the Bible says immediately when fear came into his life, he began to sink. Now, what I want you to get from this is that Satan brings you into a place of fear so that the power of God loses its power in your life. He wants you to be in a place of fear because he knows if you're in fear, you're not in faith. We've talked before, we said that fear is an opposite of faith. And so Satan wants you to be in fear and God wants you to be in faith. And so when Jesus helped Peter get out of the water, as he had fallen to the water, Jesus said, oh, your faith is so small, your faith is so little. If fear has overwhelmed you, and so that's what Satan desires to do. He wants fear to overwhelm us in our lives. So we're not able to move in the fullness and the power 
of God. See, fear even makes you forget the power of God. It makes you forget that God is with you. It'll make you turn the other way. If you don't remember that, that the power of God is on the inside of you, it will cause you to run the other way. The Bible says that Satan walks around like a roaring lion, seeking who he may devour, but he only roars. And people will allow Satan roaring at them and Satan coming at them with this fearful thing to cause them to run the other way. But we have to understand that we serve a mighty God. We serve a God who's able to do all things. And so there's no need to fear. The Bible says that God did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. But when we have fear, we fall out of place of love. When we have fear, we lose our sound mind. You know, when you become fearful, you, 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 don't, you don't think correctly. You start acting crazy. Well, Satan, he doesn't desire for your mind to be sound. He doesn't desire for you to walk in love. He doesn't desire for you to have power. And so he sends fear to compromise your faith and to put you in a position where you're not able to live to the fullness that God desires for you in your life. OK, now um, we look in scripture. We see that the nation of Israel uh, uh, um, dealt with fear all the time. They dealt with fear when they came out of Egypt. They dealt with fear after they had crossed over the, the sea that had been parted for them and they found themselves in the wilderness. And they also dealt with fear because they thought they were going to die in the wilderness. But then we see in scripture that when they got to the land of promise, the land, as the Bible says, the land of milk and honey, that they became fearful because they heard that giants were in the land. And you know what happened to the nation of Israel? Because they were so fearful, because they did not trust God, the Bible says that they spent 40 years in the wilderness. Now, the, when we look in Scripture, we see that the Bible says that it was only a few days journey between going from Egypt into the promised land. But because of fear, they found themselves wandering around in the wilderness day after day, as the Bible says, murmuring and complaining, asking if God had sent them out to die. And so fear slowed down the purpose of the nation of Israel. If they would have faith, if they would have just trusted in God, they would have been able to walk out of Egypt, cross over the sea, over dry land, go through the wilderness of a few days, walk into the promised land and all those giants, all those situations, all those people that looked like they were going to kill them if they tried to take the land. They, they would have just walked in and took exactly what God had for them. See, fear puts us in a place where we think things may happen or we become fearful of the what if. But see, when we trust in God, when we trust in a God who does not lie, when we trust in a God who has all the power in his hand. We know that when God says something, it shall come to pass. When God says something, you can take it to the bank. When God speaks something, it shall come to pass. But many of us won't, don't believe in God like that. We don't believe that God will do whatever he says. We don't believe that God has the power to deliver us out of our circumstances. And so we walk around in fear or we begin to say, well, maybe God has forgotten about us. But the Bible says that God will never leave you, nor will he forsake you. But we become fearful of the leaving. We become fearful of the forsaking. But God will never leave if we just trust in him, if we just put our confidence in him. We can just sit back and relax, not fear. The Bible says there's no fear in love. And so if we love God, we ought not even have fear anywhere near our hearts. But we should just be trusting in God, knowing that he has our back, knowing that if we continue to trust in him, he will continue to bless us. Now, we're going to go to a break right now and we'll be right back. Sometimes we find ourselves in desperation where we have lost all hope. We wonder if things will ever change. 
But if we look to Jesus and his work on the cross, our salvation is guaranteed, our life redeemed. Satan has lost his power, and now the authority for a victorious life is within our hands. Will you use what God has given you? Will you rise to victory? The devil knows that there is only one thing that can save you. His name is Jesus Christ. Time is running short, and all true believers must be ready to stand strong. In the Jesus Equation, discover how Satan tries to remove the power of Christ's sacrifice from your life, leaving you subject to his evil will. It is so important that I get this information to you that I have made it available to you for free. To get your copy, go to www.kingdomauthority.org and may God bless you. The Bible says in the last days, God's Spirit will reveal visions and dreams to his people. Some of the things God shows can be easily understood, but some leave us with questions like, is this really from God? Or what exactly does it mean? We find ourselves unsure of how to proceed. Apostle James wants the eyes of your understanding to be open. Send him your dream or your vision, and he will personally give you a revelation of what God is saying. Many years ago, God spoke to me and said I would help spread his message around the world. God wants to use his ministry to preach the gospel to the world, heal the brokenhearted, and to recover sight to the blind. We are broadcasting now in 40 countries, and God bless, we have 160 to go. A donation of any amount is greatly appreciated. To give, text KING to 24587 or call 1-800-395-7990. And to partner with us, you can just call 1-800-395-7990. God bless you. Hi, I'm James Alfred and welcome to Kingdom Authority. Today we've been talking about fear and we've been talking about overcoming fear. God desires for you to overcome fear. He doesn't want you walking around being nervous. He doesn't want you walking around being afraid, but he wants you to have confidence in him, knowing that he has your back, knowing that if you continue to trust in him, that blessings will come. The Bible says that he is not a man that he shall lie. And so when God says something, it may not look right, but if he said it, it shall come to pass. And so there's no need for us to walk around in fear, but we should just trust God. We should just walk around in our lives being joyful and thankful, no matter the circumstance, no matter the situation, no matter the frustration we go through in our life, we should just be thanking God because God doesn't give us fear, but God gave us faith to know that he sent his son to die on the cross just for us. If God was willing to send his very own son to die on the cross and to suffer, but to raise up, amen, and so that now when we call on his name, his power flows into our life, don't you know there's no need for us to fear? But the Bible says that there are many adversaries that don't desire for you to walk in a place of faith and don't desire for you to get beyond fear. See, when we look in scripture, it says there's an open door before you, but there are many adversaries. That open door is Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I stand at the door and knock. He says, if any man open, I come to him. But those adversaries stand before the door. Those adversaries are there to cause you to be fearful. Those adversaries could represent doubt. Those adversaries could represent failure. Those adversaries could represent pain, disappointment, ridicule. And so we look at these adversaries and we don't walk in the direction of Jesus Christ. Not understanding if we just walk towards him that they'll move out of our way. Why? Because Jesus Christ has made the door available to us. And there's no devil, there's no person, there's no thing, there's no amount of money, there's no amount of influence that can stop you from getting to what God has ordained for your life. Now, I want to talk to you about David and Goliath. It's an excellent example of how fear will destroy you and how faith will take you to another level. We see in scripture that Goliath was standing before the nation of Israel. 
And he was out and he called them out and he said, look, I defy the armies of Israel. He said, send me a man that we may fight. And the Bible says that all of the nation of Israel, all of the army was greatly afraid because Goliath was a giant. And so they were fearful and they said, well, who can defeat this giant? Who can beat him? And the Bible said there was a little boy that came along and he was he was helping the army out, but he wasn't a soldier. And he saw Goliath. And he said, who is this? Who is this giant up here talking all this stuff? Who is this giant that dares to defy the armies of the Lord? And so David said, allow me to go to him, allow me to fight him. And so all the men were probably looking at David and he's such a little boy. And they were saying to themselves, well, man, what are we going to do? You know, David is just a little boy, but he said he wants to fight Goliath. They should have been ashamed of themselves that they let this little boy go fight Goliath. But they were so fearful. Remember how we said how fear caused you to lose your sound mind? And so these men were so fearful that rather than trust God and go fight Goliath, they sent David himself to go fight Goliath. And so in Scripture, we see that David ran towards Goliath. He didn't want the armor. He didn't want a sword. He just took what he had destroyed the lion with and the bear with. And he ran towards Goliath and he began to testify and talk about how God had delivered him out of the hand of a bear and how he delivered him out of the lion. And so he said with himself, if God had done all these things for me before, then certainly he will deliver me out of this giant. And the Bible says that David killed the giant. Now, that's a great example of how fear can freeze you and how faith can bring you into victory. God wants you to come out of your fearful place and begin to walk in victory. Don't let those things in your life that appear to be giants keep you from walking in the blessing and the assignment God has for you. Satan's always going to talk mess. He's always going to say stuff. He's always going to try to convince you that the blessings aren't going to come. He's always going to try to talk you out of what God has already said for your life. And so don't worry about those giants. Just know that you serve a God that's greater than any giant in this life. Know that you serve a God that can destroy anything that may try to keep you from walking in the fullness of what God has said for your life. Now, I've got a few keys to overcoming fear, and I want you to write these things down. We're going to put them on the screen, but I want you to write them down. The first key to overcoming fear is make note of your testimonies. We just said that David, when he was running towards Goliath, he said, you know, that how God had delivered him out of the hand of the bear and how God had delivered him out of the hand of the lion. And, and so he had become confident because God had delivered him so many times before, then God would do it again. And so he ran because he had the testimony. He didn't have he had faith because he had God's testimony. He had what God had done with for him before. That happens to us many times in our life is that we forget about the blessings of God. We forget how God delivered us. We forget how God healed us. We forget how God broke us free. We forget, you know what I'm saying? T time goes on and we start thinking that God did it back then, but he doesn't move like that no more. But let me tell you something. The Bible says that God is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. God never changes. And so if you hold the testimony of what he do has done for you in the past, Fear won't have any power to rule over your future. Number two, I have down here, don't let your past mistakes determine your future success. Now, I'm going to read to you from Isaiah 43 and 18, and it reads, Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing, now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and the rivers in the desert. God wants to make a way in your wilderness. He wants to bring you rivers of life in the middle of your storm, in the middle of your dry places. When it seems like everything is falling apart, God will do this for you. There's no need to fear. There's no need to worry about what happened before and how it was so bad. If God tells you to do it again, that there's a blessing that is tied to it. But we're so saddened about what the bad things we've seen happen. And we say, well, I don't want that to happen to me. 
And so we become fearful. And so what Satan many times does is he will attack people and he will hope that other people see the attack and they will become so fearful of the devil that they won't do anything because they're scared that the devil is going to attack them also. But God doesn't want us to walk in fear. He doesn't want us to think about the mistakes or the errors of the past. But he wants us to be focused on the future and the success that God has ordained for us. Now, I got one more note that you're going to put down. You need to put down here for keys for overcoming fear. And that is living a life of expectancy. God wants you to live your life expecting a breakthrough. No matter how far you go down, know that God can always raise you up. No matter how difficult the situation may be, know that God is always on the job. And so you should live expecting a breakthrough. You should live expecting to be delivered. You should live expecting to be brought out of your dark situation, to brought out of that hole. Sometimes we can feel like we're in a hole or a pit and we say to ourselves, I hope I don't go down any further. But God is saying no matter how far you may go down, no matter matter how deep you may travel, I, God is saying he can raise you back up out of that situation. And so there's no need to worry. There's no need to fear. Just trust God. Just believe that he will do exactly what he said he will do. See, when we have a mindset of expectancy, it places us in a place of faith. We're trusting and believing. We're trusting God that Whatever situation we're in is only for a season. I tell people in order to get to a mountaintop, you have to go to a, through a valley. And so if you're not going through valleys, you're probably not getting through mountaintops. And so we find ourselves being stuck on a molehill and not being able to go to a mountaintop because we're scared to go down a little bit that God may take us up. But God doesn't want you to be in fear. He wants you to trust him to know that he's always working on your behalf. He's always working to bring you into a place of peace, a place of rest, a place of victory in your life. Now I'm gonna say a quick prayer for you. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. We bless your holy name in all things. I pray right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that everyone being afflicted by the spirit of fear, I pray that it might be broken right now, that your will might be done over their life, that faith may begin to raise up in their lives and they may overcome all the, the things that have been held up, all the situations that have been seized and that your joy may come into their life and they break free and begin to walk in victory. We thank you, Lord. Now, there's one more story I want to tell you about, and that's a story of Gideon and how Gideon was able to overcome all obstacles. The Bible says that he was sitting one day and the angel of the Lord came to him and said, mighty man of valor. And Gideon looked at the angel of the Lord and said, what do you mean? My family, we're poor. We don't have much. We're not much of anything. But the spirit of but the angel of the Lord said to him, you're a mighty man of valor. And so God told him, I need you to raise up an army because the nation of Israel was in captivity. He said, I need you to raise up an army to go and free the nation of Israel from captivity. And so the Bible says that Gideon went and got up a full army and God said to him, no, you got too many people. And then Gideon shaved that number down to a few, uh, several thousand less than that. And God told him again, no, you have too many people. And God finally got him down to 300 men. And God said, these are my men. Then he said, take them. And I want you to encircle the camp where the nation of Israel is being held captive. And so the 300 men went and encircled the camp and God told them to begin to make noises by crashing things together. So they began to do that. And they said and God told them to say sword of the Lord. And they yelled out sword of the Lord. And the Bible says that the armies that were holding the nation of Israel became greatly afraid. And it says they, they got up and they began to kill each other. And they were so afraid that they even began to flee. Now, what I want you to get from this is that Gideon only had 300 men and he was able to encircle an army. Now, what happened? Gideon 
faith caused fear to raise up in his enemy. See, Satan wants you to have fear in your life so that you can't dominate him with faith. But when you raise up in faith, you cause fear in your enemy. See, when the men encircled the camp, they were standing in faith, trusting God. And by them being in faith, they caused their enemies to go into fear and to begin to flee. See, the Bible even says that, you know, when we resist the devil, he will flee from you. Well, what's happening? When you resist the devil, you're operating by faith. And your faith causes fear to enter into Satan's heart and he begins to flee. See, Satan wants you to take that fear upon yourself, but God wants you to work in faith and cause Satan to be in fear and for him to flee away from you. So I want you right now, as you're listening, as you're watching this program, I want you to ask God to remove fear from your heart and to put faith on the inside, to allow the power of God to flow into your life, that the spirit of God may raise up in you with the spirit of Gideon, that you may overcome all the hand of the enemy, that you may overcome all the pressures, all the doubt, all the things that tried to convince you that you're not good enough. That's tried to convince you that you'll never win. That's tried to convince you that you'll be a, fa a failure. I want you to trust God right now and allow faith to come in and for fear to depart. Well, this has been Kingdom Authority. Thank you so much for tuning in. May God bless you and we'll talk to you soon. Sometimes we find ourselves in desperation where we have lost all hope. We wonder if things will ever change. But if we look to Jesus and his work on the cross, our salvation is guaranteed, our life redeemed. Satan has lost his power, and now the authority for a victorious life is within our hands. Will you use what God has given you? Will you rise to victory? The Bible says in the last days, God's Spirit will reveal visions and dreams to his people. Some of the things God shows can be easily understood, but some leave us with questions like, is this really from God? Or what exactly does it mean? We find ourselves unsure of how to proceed. Apostle James wants the eyes of your understanding to be open. Send him your dream or your vision, and he will personally give you a revelation of what God is saying. latest audio and video messages make sure you download the kingdom authority app at your android or apple store